Hello and welcome to Grow with EdTech Tips and Tools. This is Crystal Hurt with ESU10. And for number nine today, we are going to talk about the PicRat Tech Integration Model. Now, many of you may be familiar with SAMR and with TPAC, in which we use those models to analyze how using the utilization of technology is affecting what the teacher's doing. I recently came across the PicRat model and I really liked it because we not only talk about how the teacher's use of technology transforms those practices, but also the student's relationship to this technology. And so if we look down here at the bottom, this is similar to SAMR. Um, if a teacher were to replace something, amplify or transform, that's pretty familiar. But over here on the left hand side, we have how students are interacting with that particular technology. So are they passive? Are they just sitting there taking it in? Are they interactive where there's some give and play back and forth? Or are they creative where they're really using technology to reach some of those upper levels of Bloom's taxonomy? So let's take a look like what this looks like in action. So I've got some examples over here and we're gonna see if we can place them on the pick rat. This first one says a teacher uses a PowerPoint or slide deck to enhance their lecture. So the student is still passive here because because they are going to be listening to the lecture. Um, however, that slide deck does not necessarily replace, but maybe adds a little bit to the lecture. And what if that teacher took the same slide deck and turned it into an ed puzzle so that students could watch it on their own, they could stop, they could um, you know, answer those questions, or they could use something like Pear Deck or um, Nearpod where they're getting some feedback with students. In that case, the teacher's use is amplified and the student's relationship becomes interactive because they're able to answer those questions and the teacher's able to have some formative assessment checks along the way. But finally, if we want to get to this transformative and creative nation's part, what if rather than the teacher creating, we had students create and share videos of the content in sort of a jigsaw format? And this would work well for something at the end of a unit or a review where students could really create videos um, showing what they have learned. And then they could put that out there maybe on a discussion board or a Google slide so that their fellow students or peers could access it and have that as a review guide. Let's think about this in terms of students. Oftentimes when we want to see what students know, we might have them use, uh, you know, just give them a basic worksheet. If we're thinking about technology, a lot of our teachers are going paperless. So we have teachers using Kami, but they're taking that same worksheet that they used to do and they're just making a digital copy of it. So here um, we have something that is replacing it. And while students are interactive, they're not necessarily getting to that creative or amplified amplification state because teachers are just replacing that worksheet with a digital one. What if we asked students to respond to that same reading or those same questions but left it a little bit more open-ended and instead had them keep an online journal or blog? In this case, our students are still interactive because they're interacting with that content, but the technology that we're choosing amplifies that particular lesson because we could not necessarily do it if we did not have those blogs or those online journals. And finally, if we really want students to show what they know um, and create something, one of my favorite go-to strategies is called a car or a choose a response. And this is where we really rely on that technology because it transforms what students are able to do in terms of not only logistics, but just kind of the cool graphics, videos, et cetera. But then we're also pushing them into those higher level of blooms by asking them to create. And so this is something that I love to do, especially in the ELA classroom after a reading or after we had done some content in class, but they would get to choose a response. And notice it says complete the reading um, and complete a response of your choice and post it to the classroom or discussion learning board for others to see. And the fun thing was, as I had students create collages, I had students create videos, I had students create comics, um, and it took a while for them to realize that I wasn't asking for one particular thing. But once they got into this creative transformative space, they didn't wanna leave and I didn't want them to leave because the products that I were getting was so much better than those canned worksheets. So the last resource I wanted to show with you, if you're wondering, well, how you know do I know which technology to use or what are my options for students? Um, I give a shout out to Chad Ackerson, who is a middle school teacher at Westside. 
sorry, West Ridge, and he has created a Google site that gives students lots of options in terms of how they might create or how they might show their learning. And my favorite part about this is that students then, if they decide, okay, I'm gonna create a flow chart or diagram, what are some tech tools that I could use to create a flow chart or diagram? And those tools are there. Same thing for the poster and infographic, we've got ideas for tools. Now, if you're panicking and saying, but I don't know how to use these tools, just remember our students are very tech savvy and they will probably figure it out and teach you as well. So again, as you think about integrating technology into your classroom, consider how not only it affects your practice, but the level of interaction that your students are able to engage with. Thank you.